<laughs> Let's move on to Flo. Hello. Good afternoon. Let's go back to literature. <laughs> My paper is a journey into the folklore of the Mandaya. Uh, Mandaya being one of the ethnic tribes, no, ethnic groups uh, in Mindanao, collectively called uh, the Lumad. I chose to focus on folklore because uh, the folk literature of a community is a valuable part of its culture. It provides a portrait of life as experienced uh, by a group at a particular time and place. One of the cornerstones of their cultural identity, it encapsulates the worldviews and belief systems of this uh, community. The rapid march of societies around the world into the socio-economic advances of the 21st century has had dire consequences on smaller communities in terms of preserving this cultural uh, identity. The transmission of oral traditions, a center of cultural practice, is threatened when the elders of the community pass away and the younger generation succumb to the pressures brought by new livelihoods and uh, lifestyle. So uh, I and my research, the research team uh, went into a particular Mandaya community, one of the most numerous, the most numerous uh, uh, groups, no? ethnic groups uh, in, the, in Mindanao. It has its own share of oral traditions that's worth, uh, what is this, preserving? Is that the politically correct word? So this paper documents this culture through the retrieval of this uh, literature. Uh, it draws on uh, Alan Don, it says, uh, concepts and folklore which holds that the folk cannot be separated from the lore, so the examination of the text must include not only its texture but also the social setting into which the lore is told. The most, uh, the concentration of Mandaya is actually in Caraga, Davao Oriental, but this uh, we, we chose to focus on Manay, Davao Oriental, and we only uh, Co uh, concentrated our efforts on the three uh, uh, municipalities, no, not municipalities, uh, barrios, we call it barrio, no, that's uh, Lambog, Kapasnan, and uh, Rizal. When we consulted the IPMR, that's the Indigenous Peoples Mandatory Representative, uh, we were told to just focus on these uh, barrios, no, on this. Um, uh, places because further up in the highlands uh, uh, there are already NPAs no? and sergeants, they would say. So for our safety, they asked us to focus on uh, only three uh, groups. So the, the uh, yeah, no, so research participants, the final uh, 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 informants of the uh, study range from 45 to 70 years old. All could speak the Highland Bandaya language fluently. Let me just qualify. The Highland Bandaya is the sort of the original Mandaya language, no? because there is a type of Mandaya that's spoken by the lowlanders, no? where I come from. No? I'm, I'm called a lowlander already. And that the, the language there is not anymore the, the Mandaya spoken by the Highlanders. Uh, it's, in fact, it's already called the Bowenio, no? and there are some language variations uh, and also in other parts now of Davao uh, Oriental. Uh, during the conduct of the... Uh, because uh, the indigenous peoples in my part of the world are already aware of their rights. No? You can just go into the community and uh, uh, ask them to tell no, their narratives, their stories. So we went through uh, an FPIC, uh, free prior informed consent process, which took almost a year no, to complete. That involves four community assemblies, the signing of the MOA, and the validation facilitated by the NCIP. No, we, we even had to pay the NCIP staff to accompany us to these uh, communities in coordination, of course, with the IPMR of uh, the municipality. So the primary tool used was key informant interview. Retelling was done through performance. These were audio and videotaped with proper permissions from the, uh, the community concerned. Uh, there was peer debriefing and then the transcription by a Mandia scholar. That means a person from the NCIP to 
to translate uh, the the folk tales, no, the folklore uh, conducted uh, retrieve. I mean, then the validation of gathered folklore by the Mandaya community. We were able to to collect uh, twenty folklore, oh, and which can be classified into seven specific literary forms distinct to Mandaya literature. Now, let me just uh, clarify this. Uh, this, uh, this particular uh, categories like Bayok, Bayok, Dawot, no, the, the informants themselves, no, the elders would say that this is the, the description of the story of the song no, being sung by the participants. They would say, for example, Magbayok ako, no, I, I would uh, chant a Bayok. So the first one is Bayok. It's a love and adventure song composed by the singer herself. There's, there was only one Bayok uh, collected during the study, and this was composed on the spot. I knew that it was composed on the spot because the, the, the elder who chanted the song was actually criticizing me for waking her up early in the morning at <laughs> and telling me to, to go to a particular uh, place. It's sort of funny in a way. Uh, it, it made the, the journey, you know, the research, uh, exciting you know, and fulfilling. The second one is the bayot, uh, the what, sorry. It's a verse chanted for specific purposes. Sorry, sorry. Uh, it's usually chanted by a balian. Balian is the uh, like a shaman uh, uh, of of the uh, of that particular community. <laughs> so in this study, the informant stopped after chanting uh, only one verse uh, of the the what because she was afraid to offend her new religion. No, she was already into a trance. No, they call it takig. No, she was already into the trance. She suddenly stopped and said, I'm afraid, Mom, I cannot continue because my my pastor is my son and he forbade me to 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 chant anymore, no, the Balian uh, chants. But uh, you can tell that she was still she's still a, a, a Balian at heart, no? Because she was able to harness her spiritual powers and go into the beginnings uh, of a trance. That's the prelude to the summoning of the spirits. Then we have the Bagi. Um, it's a song which can be sung by both men and women during various occasions and for different purposes. There were two Bagi collected during the field work. The first one is uh, a song sung during weddings, and the second one is a lullaby. No? Uh, we, we'll, I'll give some samples later. The fourth one is the Panawagtawag. It's akin to a proverb or a saying. It is a verse chanted over and over the, by the performer and is a minor ritual incorporated into a major ritual such as healing or planting rituals. It is performed not only by the balian but also by other members of a community. For purposes of healing, a balian performs a panawagtawag to call her abian, that's a spirit guide to invoke help in healing the ailment of the person being cured. For other purposes like planting and harvesting, a farmer performs a panawagtawag to ask the spirits for help in uh, protecting the crop. Panawagtawag literally could be translated as calling. calling. Next one is the babatokon. The, the root word would be batok, which means to, to recover, to, to, to remember. No? It's a form of prose fiction, narrating a story for different purposes, such as the telling, uh, telling the origin of a place or for entertaining children and uh, friends. There were seven babatokon um, there, uh, seven babatokon um, uh, collected in the study. That's the babatokon ng Rizal. It's a legend about the origin of uh, the place. The name of the place is Rizal. Then we have Dayanon, the last Bagani. It relates the story of a Bagani, a warrior of the Mandaya tribe and other tribes uh, actually also in uh, Mindanao. It, it, the Bagani occupies an important place in the political scene of the community. This particular story recounts the story of, Baga of Dayanon, who had 28 followers, and the tale recounts the death of this warrior. That's why uh, 
the informant who told the story also said this uh, that Dayanon is the last Magani of the Mandaya uh, tribe. Then you have the Valiero, which is also about uh, a Bagani, but he's not really a full-fledged Bagani. Uh, but he was known for his infamous deeds no, in the community. One of these is the habit of eating his enemy's uh, liver after killing him, a uh, characteristic for which Valiero is known for. The next uh, story is Yang Balian. Uh, it tells the story of Babalian, uh, and not uh, the folkloric uh, figure who occupies a vital part in the indigenous minds and uh, cultures. Uh, this uh, Babatokon centers on the healing prowess, describing the stages that a young female apprentice, a Piagabon, that's the apprentice to become a, a, a Balian, undergoes to become a full-fledged uh, Balian. The Piagabon in this story stopped being a Balian after she was exposed to Christianity. No, so uh, this is quite a common story among many Balians in the community. There were dire consequences, however, to her decision. Her house burned to the ground and all her paraphernalia as a Balian uh, burned, uh, including the Palatina and uh, Sanki. The next story is Don Felipe. It, it uh, recounts the adventures of Felipe who, who ventures to another land to seek uh, his fate, no? So the entire narrative talks about the many trials he overcomes to gain uh, his wife. Next one is si, uh, Juan as the young princessa. Uh, literally, that's Juan and prin the princess. It's a romantic story of a man's pursuit of his beloved. Uh, unlike the other stories collected for the, the research, this one is a trickster tale it, uh, about a poor but smart person who gets the better of a wealthy, powerful uh, ruler. The last Baba token is Yang Karabao as the Tagnok. Uh, it, it, it means the Karabao and the Mosquito. Uh, it's a fable, so the, all the characters in the story are animals. No? It's like a nursery rhyme uh, where you, you tell the tale and then you add one animal after the other, after the carabao and mosquito. The next, let's go back. Okay. The next uh, type of folklore is the uh, Uman Uman. We only collected three in the story in the, uh, during the conduct of the research. The first one is um, Buyag uh, Baklog, it means the the husband and the wife. Now it's a story of a married couple. Buyag is a term which means old woman among the Mandaya. It is also used as a term of endearment for a wife. To show familiarity and affection, the husband in the story, instead of saying Buyag, would drop the B sound and would just say Uyag. No, it's supposed to 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 show no familiarity. Uh, between the two. The wife would also not say baklog, but would say aklog. Uh, so the initial consonant B was dropped. There were sexual innuendos in the story, uh, which would uh, make you concerned that this is not really a fairy tale and not supposed to be for children. Uh, but but uh, the context of the telling is uh, like a, a gathering of men. Uh, and they would laugh, no? And he was actually the, 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 the people around, no, when they were performing, uh, began laughing while he was uh, telling the tale. Next story is Tamisa. Uh, Tamisa means the, the youngest child in a family. So the tale is told for entertainment, uh, which serves to highlight the role of parents in the caring of their child. Kaya is an environmentalist story. Uh, it's a story of a man who got sick because the water spirits got angry with him for getting creatures from the river. Kaya means uh, the, 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 all, the, all those living in the water, not just the water spirits. Oh, sorry. Let's go to the Mandaya cultural values and traditions. There's an, there's an example of the Bayok and uh, the what we, we recovered. First one is respect for authority. 
uh, they call their elders mang katikadong or mang katadong, no? And there are also other figures of authority uh, called the Bagani and the Balian, no? The, the one I alluded to uh, uh, earlier. So for the for the early uh, elders, uh, they are called uh, the Bagani and Balian. The present uh, figures of authority would be the mang katadong, the elders, and the barangay captain, the present uh, sort of tribal chieftain of uh, the community. Next uh, cultural value which we were able to gather is the reverence for nature. No? Uh, uh, reverence for nature is physical as well as supernatural form. It's, a part of, it's part of the way of the life of the Mandaya. Preserving this nature is important to them and uh, which perhaps would explain their ties to the land. No? They're very close to the land and um, uh, has great respect for it. When they pass through a uh, woody corpse or the woods, they would say, tabi, tabi po. No, uh, 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 just respect for whoever is uh, living in those woods. Next is the importance of dreams. Uh, dreams play a significant role in the life of the community as revealed by the stories. No? For the Balian, for example, the dream is very important, is crucial, particularly uh, as an indication that you are chosen to become a Balian. No? So if you are going to become a Balian, you dream about it. Uh, like, uh, like you dream that you are dressed in white and you are curing the, uh, the people. No? Uh, next is the chewing of the betel nut. Uh, the Mandaya calls it magmama. No, the chewing of the betel nut. Uh, it performs uh, a social function, actually. It is done when among friends and relatives to pass the time and during conversation. When offered to another, it is taken as a sign of friendship or uh, affection for the other person. No? Next is the ambivalent role of women. women uh, there are... Uh, Leadership role for women in the community, uh, like uh, the ones uh, in, uh, enjoyed by the Balian. Uh, but although uh, that's empowering, there are also some roles which can be marginalizing. No? So as empowerment, women are seen as, as medical and spiritual leaders in the role of uh, Balian. No? But some women perform the role of advisor to their male partners and uh, uh, there's a, also a patriarchal sense of, of being a, a sexual object for uh, some of the men, no? That, like, like they, 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 can, they can be exchanged uh, as for, for favors, no? To a particular friend or an enemy. Okay. To conclude, the folklore co collected for the present study is only the tip of the iceberg as far as Mandaya folklore is concerned. This text exhibited linguistic features like the dropping of the initial consonant, like the H, no? and the texts themselves reveal folkloric heroes such as Bagani and Balian, no? as well as the elders in the olden days and the barangay captain for the present uh, leadership. The cultural values and beliefs revealed in the stories reflect a worldview that has undertones of present circumstances, though still rooted in old uh, beliefs. Contact with other communities could perhaps explain the use of non-indigenous names in some stories. Uh, like if you remember the, the, the titles of the stories I presented, some are Spanish names actually, Juan, uh, Felipe, no, no, uh, and uh, uh, it, it makes you think about uh, what kind of exposure they've been, no, uh, they've experienced to come up with these kinds of stories, which they they, they feel that, that that it belongs to them, no, the stories, no? it's part of their uh, cultural uh, memory. Uh, the, uh, my my theory is, uh, Dondes would say that. Folklore is constantly being created anew in contemporary times. Tales are not fixed, therefore, and reflect the context of the group currently telling the tale. No. So we, we could not say that these are bastardized versions of the stories that used to be told no, with uh, new names and uh, uh, new circumstances. There is a need then to collect folklore from the new generation of the Mandaya 
with ethnic identity not a fixed uh, form present not only among the old folks of a tribe. The present generation recreates their identities to survive among modern conditions and challenges. It would also be a challenge to explore this negotiation of identity through the new uh, forms of folklore that Mandaya created. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so whilst the um, participants are coming up to be on Some the pictures. main table, would anyone like a quick question? 